Hi, and welcome back. You know, today we can do everything from our phone, right? We can video chat with our family. We can transfer money to a friend. We can do all the things, even like watching our favorite baseball team. It's amazing how much power these devices that we hold in our hand have. If you think about the computing power, it's a little mind boggling. I mean, the iPhone processors today have something like 60,000 times more power than the computers on Apollo 11. It's crazy, isn't it? And just because our phones have all of this computing power doesn't mean we should let our phones control us. Today, I'm going to give you a tip on how you can take back control of your phone so that your phone isn't controlling you. Hi, I'm Kate Huffnagel, the Digital Wrangler. After spending 25 years working in high-tech fields like software development, big data, artificial intelligence, I started my own business because I want to put my technical know-how to use so that everyone can benefit. Today's video relates to you. I want to introduce you and show you a feature that maybe you really don't know about. And ultimately, it's going to help you wrangle your phone and reclaim your phone maybe even free up some of that cellular data that you've been using. Today's topic kind of sort of relates to email. You know, nothing drives me more bonkers than having my phone ding, 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 all throughout the day. I'm not a lab rat. I'm not Pavlov's dog. I don't need to react every single time that my phone makes a noise. And I don't believe you need to either. I think back to memories of growing up having dinner as a family around the kitchen table, and given the kitchen layout that I envisioned in my head, this was obviously in the early 80s, and the phone would ring during dinner. And my mother would like point her finger around and look at all of us, don't you dare answer that phone, it's there for our convenience. And I have taken that approach even now as I approach 50. The phone is here for my convenience. So if you have an iPhone, I'm assuming that you're like me, in that you have your email connected to the mail app. The beautiful thing about our phones is that we can check our email when we feel like it. When it comes to email, there's a clever little setting that's hidden underneath a few layers called Fetch. And I wanna talk about Fetch today. First, I'm going to walk you through how to find this setting, and then I'm gonna talk about what all the options within the setting mean. So let's go find this fetch thingamabobber. In order to find fetch, I want you to open up your settings. I then want you to scroll down. You're gonna to have to scroll a little bit until you get to mail. When I touch mail, you're gonna see that I have multiple email accounts coming into my mail app, right? I have three, I have my iCloud email, I have my personal email, and then I have my Wrangler email. Underneath the list of those email accounts, you'll see the fetch option. For me, I have it turned off. Let's touch that option and let's see, whoa, all of these other settings that are presented to us. At the top, you're going to see push. What is this push, fetch? What, what do all these terms mean? Okay, so let's start there. What push means is that anytime you receive a new email, whether it's to your Gmail account, to your iCloud account, Yahoo, or Hotmail account. When you have push turned on, that means as soon as that email lands on a Yahoo or an Apple or a Google server, it's gonna push it to your phone. So if you have cellular data turned on, it's constantly working behind the scenes to push all of those emails into your app on your phone as close to instantaneous as they can be. Now, for me, I don't get anything that is that critical in email. If there's an emergency with my family or if there's an emergency in my neighborhood, I am being notified in ways that are not email. So for me, I don't have push turned on. So you can see I have push turned off. Now, if you regularly receive very time sensitive emails, perhaps then it makes sense for you to have push turned on. 
But in my opinion, I think that that would be a minority of individuals who need to have that push turned on. Underneath that push option, again, you see the various email accounts that I have. Now, what's really cool is that I can change the fetching for each account. Now, what does fetch mean? So push was Google or Yahoo pushing the emails to you. Fetch means when am I, Kate, pulling those new messages onto my phone? Why they don't use pull, I don't know. For me, in the interest of full disclosure, I don't spend a lot of time on my phone related to emails, right? I'm on my phone because I'm checking Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm texting friends. Maybe I'm like looking up some news. My phone is not used all that much for email. And I realize that I might be in the minority uh, on that. For me, when I open up my mail app on my phone, that is when I want my phone to go fetch all of those new emails. Meaning if I put my phone down, I'm working with a client, or if I'm out having some tacos with a good friend of mine, I don't need my phone to be working constantly to fetch all of that new data, right? I am perfectly content with my mail app pulling down my new messages when I go and open the app. And again, I realize that my style may not be the same as yours. However, if there are some email accounts, maybe you have an email account that you set up just to subscribe to like your favorite retailers and you don't need those emails all the time, maybe you want to think about switching from a push to more of a fetch when it comes to your emails. Because think about this, every time that your email, whether the email is being pushed to you or every time you're going out to fetch new email, if you're not on Wi-Fi and you're out and about, you're using your cellular data just to pull that information. You can actually set up different email accounts for fetching and pushing, which is great if your phone gives you the ability to customize all of these different features. If you are going to take a page out of Kate's book and you're going to have everything be set to fetch, if you scroll to the bottom, Apple then is asking, all right, Kate, how often do you want to fetch new emails? If you listen to what I said earlier, I have my phone set up so that when I open the app for mail, it is then going to fetch all of my new messages. That is what it means to have fetch set to manually. Anytime I go into my email app, whether that's four times a day, 18 times a day, once a day, that is when it's going to fetch my new email, which means throughout the day, the number of unread emails on my mail app is going to remain constant because I'm not having mail check behind the scenes. If you want your mail to fetch, say every 30 minutes or every hour, or if you do have the potential to receive time sensitive emails on your phone, you know, maybe your day job or your night job requires you to, to be, more on, be more online with your emails, then you may want to consider setting fetch up to fetch, say every 15 minutes or so. This is your personal decision. So I trust that you're going to make the best decision for you your various email accounts, and your situation. That's pretty much Fetch. I'm really curious if any of you even heard about Fetch before this video. If you hadn't, I would love for you to post in the comments. If you happen to have a family member who's like constantly eating up all of their cellular data and you really haven't been able to figure out why, this might be one contributor to that. So I hope you'll consider sharing this video with them so that they can take a look at their fetch settings and see if they wanna make any changes. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.